Welcome to Radix Facts. I'm Curtis Youngblood. Today we're going to be rebuilding a 91 HG motor. We're going to go through a complete rebuild. We're going to be changing the crank, both bearings, piston line or end ring. The main items you're going to need for the rebuild, you'll need some kind of oven, just to make sure it's to get 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't tend to recommend you use your oven in your house because it tends to stink pretty good, but that's your choice. Other items that you will need, I, I tend to use an old main shaft to help tap the bearings out to make sure they come out. Sometimes they'll just fall out, other times you may have to tap them out a little bit. If you want a 2.5 to just disassemble the motor, 2.5 wrench. You'll need a socket for removing and tightening the nut. Uh, at the same time, you're going to need a fan hub to help seat the bearings. That's also what you need the wrench for to seat it when they're hot so they, they seat all the way down to the case. A little hammer to help tap things in and out. A vise to help set things so you know bearings are going in straight when you're tapping them and sitting on a flat straight surface. And then just general items for cleaning, paper towels, maybe a little bit of alcohol. We're going to get things started by taking the motor apart and we'll go through the general setup of rebuilding the motor. Now I forgot to mention you also need a 2 millimeter wrench to pull the carburetor off. Uh, in this assembly there's nothing, you don't heat anything up, you just, you just remove all the bolts. Uh, the carburetor should come off. Um, make sure you get the O-ring. Uh, the head, the head you're, just gonna re you're just gonna pull all these bolts, all six of these bolts, and pull all four of these bolts uh, to get the motor and its basic breakdown so then you can get the, the piston liner, excuse me, wrong wrench. You can get the piston liner and crank out of it. And once you've got all the bolts loose on the head, when you're pulling it out, just make sure not to lose the washers. You can drop the bolts down. There's there's shim washers in the head. Just make sure not to lose those. You can see this motor is kind of dead. You can tell it really burned bad on the head. Okay, now I'm going to get to the back plate. Okay, once the bolts for the back plate are off, you're simply just going to pull the back plate off again. Make sure to keep track of the O-ring that comes with it. Okay, now that we've got the back plate and the head off the motor, I'm going to work on actually getting the, the piston and liner out of the motor. So I just get the nut off the crank. Um, then I'm going to, from the inside, put your finger on the inside, feel the bottom lip of the liner and just push the liner out of the motor. A little stuck there a little bit, but I got to push out. And then to get the piston and liner out, you turn the crank so it's all the way at the top, top of the case. And you pull up on the um, piston rod, uh, and then it pops right out of the motor. It was stuck a little bit because it's kind of an old motor, but uh, you just so you pull it to the top and then stick your finger and then pull up on it until it pops out. So now it's out. So we have the, both the piston and the liner out. To get the crank out, you can usually just push it with your finger and it'll pop out. If not, sometimes you have to have a little piece of wood and, and bang it against the piece of wood to get it to actually pop the crank out. So now we got all disassembled. All that's left now is to heat it up to get the bearings out. So I'm actually going to take the, well actually sorry, one more thing. I usually take the retainer for the carburetor. I go ahead and pull that out just so there's no heat issues. Should handle the heat fine, but I go ahead and pull it out. So I just go ahead and unthread this the rest of the way, push the back side out, and then pull the screw and the remaining piece of that out. So I've got all these pieces out. Um, so all I, all I really have left is the case and the bearing. So now I'm going to heat the oven up to 300 degrees and set it in the oven for about 20 minutes uh, while, so let the case expand so the bearings are loose so I can pop them out. Okay, I've got the oven heated up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just going to take the motor case with the bearings and stick it in the oven uh, and let it heat up a little bit. Some people uh, at the same time take the actual bearings, the new bearings, and put them in the freezer uh, so that they contract and will go into the expanded motor later on. I don't tend to do that. I don't like the idea of freezing them and possibly getting water in the bearings and stuff, so I, I leave them at room temperature. Uh, but we'll wait for this to finish heating up in about 20 minutes. We'll come back and get the bearings out. Oh, I think that's our 20 minutes. Let's get our motor out. Uh, should be good and hot. I just use paper towels. You could use a um, oven mitt or something. The bottom bearing, the back bearing, you should just tap. It comes out. 
front bearing. Usually what I'll use the vise for is to give it a good base to sit on, then I'll tap it out uh, with the tap it out with the, the main shaft. There we go. Got the bearings out, heated up. Now I just gotta clean the motor out, some paper towel and alcohol, and I'll be ready to put the other bearings in. Okay, now once the bearings are out, the main the big thing you want to do is clean where the new bearings are going to seat. Like this has a lot of goop down inside the motor. You want to take some paper towels, clean all that out. Um, maybe take a screwdriver with, with paper towels on the end of it and just clean out all the areas where the bearings are actually going to sit uh, before you press the new ones back in. And once I finish cleaning out the insides of the crankcase, I go ahead and wipe out everything just so, you, so there's no other material left from the old uh, stuff that was in the motor. Once it's all cleaned out and flushed out, I then put it back in the uh, oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so it can warm back up again. Uh, I also, then, then I get out the new crankshaft for the motor uh, and the new bearings. It's always good to just inspect everything everything before you put it in the motor look at the bearings uh, spin them make sure they seem to feel okay there's no debris or anything in the bearings you, there's almost never is but it's always good just to check um, to prepare them for putting them in the motor I go ahead and slide the rear bearing on the crankshaft and the logos or the things you can read on the bearing go toward the back of the crankshaft so just press them on Sometimes they're kind of a tight fit. Press it all the way down to the base till it touches. Now the front bearing, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to put it on the crankshaft backwards, uh, where the the open part of the bearing is actually facing out. The reason I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to use it to to put it into the motor and then pull this out and then go back in the other way. So I'm going to use this as my my thing to hold the bearing as I put it in the motor. So I put the front bearing in there backwards for when I actually install it in the motor. Okay, this is now ready. Uh, we're going to wait for the motor to finish heating up again about 20 minutes and then we'll install the bearings. Now to be ready for when the motor comes out of the oven uh, to put the new bearings in, you want to have the crankshaft with the new bearings on it, the front bearing reversed. Uh, you want to have the hub ready so you can tighten it down and pull the bearings up tight have your wrench ready to do all that and the nut for the motor. So I'm going to pull the motor out of the oven. It's been sitting there about 20 minutes, about 300 degrees. It's smoking pretty good. I just pop the front bearing in, hold it in place with one finger, and then pop, pop the back one in, hold it up, and I'm going to put the fan hub, and I hold my finger in while it's hot. This part's better if you have an oven mist, because then you can hold this in place. Put the fan hub on, then you're going to turn, tighten the nut down on the motor. And what this is going to do, this is going to pull the bearings up tight in the case. Pulling up tight in the case will make them seat properly. Tighten it up. And, okay. It's tight. Now what you're going to do is push down to get the top bearing seated. And then you're going to grab the case and then pull to get the back. So you get the, you can get the front seated. See the front just click. I heard it click. Front seated and then pull and make sure the back. And what you're going to have when you're done, it'll be in. You have a tiny bit of vertical play. You're going to click just a little bit. Tiny bit of vertical play and you know it's seated correctly. One thing I tend not to do, it, it's tempting right now to sit here and spin it and see how nice and smooth it spins. When their motor's still this hot with no kind of lubrication, I tend to not do that. I'll let it sit and cool off before I mess with the motor anymore. So it's gonna sit here and cool, then we're gonna work on actually putting the other components back inside the motor. While the motor's continuing to cool, I'll set it aside, and then I'll actually get the piston uh, and ring uh, all ready to put in the model. Uh, first thing I do is actually, let's put in the motor, I should say. I'm gonna get the ring actually onto the piston uh, main thing you need to find on the piston is where the pin, there's a little pin on the piston which goes with the opening in the ring. I simply lay it where the where the pin is on one side, hold it with one finger and kind of go around the edge to expand it till it snaps in place. That's really it. 
just when you're installing this, make sure that that gap stays with where that pin is so that it closes down and stays in the right spot. Uh, now that we have the ring on the piston, we're going to actually put the ring, the piston and ring, excuse me, into the motor first. To protect it as you put it in, I'm going to use a piece of paper, a paper towel, excuse me, around the, the piston as I set it in. Now, one question is which way do you place it? Uh, if you look at this piston, there's a bigger gap cut in this side than this side. The larger gap cut goes in the fr towards the front of the motor because the exhaust port actually faces towards the back on the 91. If you have the bigger gap on the back, it would tend to open up in the gap when the exhaust is open, so you want to make sure the smaller gap is on the back of the motor. So I'm going to use the paper towel. Make sure that the rod goes to the back. Just setting it in because I don't need to line up with the crankshaft. Set it down inside the motor. And then you're going to want to try it. It's going to be a little hard to show it on video because I need, to, I need to face this down to get the, the rod to line up at the end of the crankshaft. But I'm trying to get these two to line up so I can snap them on. So I turn it, line up, and I, I do it where the, at the very top, and at the top, and I snap it in place. It's in place. And I, leave, I had the paper towel in there the whole time so I didn't tend to scratch things. I'll, push everything down to bottom dead center and then pull the paper towel out. And at this point I'll then put the liner in. And the main thing with the liner is to make sure that this slit or this notch in the top of the liner is going to line up with that pin. So you're going to push it into the motor part way to make sure it doesn't touch the top of the piston yet. And I my finger down inside and touch the top of the piston to make sure it's lining up. Okay, with the Liner in there with the piston down there lined up on the bottom. You keep rotating and push. There it goes. Went over it and then all the way down until the liner is pushed straight on the pin. And just turn it and make sure everything turns freely. Okay, it's all together. Now we just need to put the back plate back on and the head back on. I'm going to keep this with just a stock single shim. I think it's an 8,000th shim. Some people, especially on the 8Z, are running two shims, sometimes I think two, two and a half, where they're almost. 20,000 shims. This one's just going to stay stock for the moment. So just make sure when you put it in, you've got the standard shims, or excuse me, you still do have shims, whether standard or, or modified. Uh, when you put the back plan on, make sure you still have your O ring. And when you put the car back in, make sure it still has its O ring too to stay sealed. Okay, so as I'm putting the head on, I just make sure the, o the ring, excuse me, the little shim there is still in place. Set it so that it doesn't get trapped. Sometimes when you, if you Turn it this way, this, it, it can actually drop out and get caught between the head of the engine and the main body case, so I tend to keep the head down with the shim on it and put the body toward it so I make sure it stays lined up. And then I just put all the bolts back on the head. Now when I'm tightening this motor down, uh, the head of the motor down, the bolts in it, I, I well, you want to do it in kind of a star pattern. You want to start one one bolt, just lightly snug it, go across, lightly snug, the one next to it, then across, lightly snug them all down, the one next to that one, and across. And you just slightly torque torquing it a little more and a little more each time. Some guys actually use torque wrenches for this to get an exact number. Uh, that's fine. I never really have. I just kind of go by feel and make it slightly tighter each time and go round and round and round until it's fully tight. Um, that's it on the head. Now for the back plate, again make sure the o-ring's there. Simply put it into place and tighten it down. Now for the back plate of the motor, I'll tighten it down kind of a similar star pattern as you did on the head, but it's not nearly as critical on the back plate. You're not really worried about the seal in the same way as you are on the head of the motor. Uh, so just um, I haven't spent quite as long tightening this down. Then on the carburetor, once you have the back plate down the carburetor, just make sure to reinsert the pieces that, that connect the carburetor in place, that will clamp the carburetor in place. Uh, the main issue is actually lining them up to so actually sit properly. Uh, once that's done, uh, you just slip the carburetor into place, tighten it down, and your motor's all done. Uh, it's ready to reinstall in the helicopter, break in, 
Uh, we'll probably do a Radix fax later again on the actual break-in. General summary of it is run it about tuned, in other words at temperature, just deep hitch the model so you don't load it too much, run about 20 runs, uh, then you should be able fine with just going ahead and putting more pitch into it and going full speed on it. But uh, that's the rebuild of the 91HZ. Um, hope you enjoy it.